Guys, uh, oh. All right, guys, welcome back. Today, um, I want to take it some time to see if you guys just had any questions about the quiz or the homework. Um, so that's what we'll do first, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws. And um, but first, before I get into that, uh, let's go ahead and look at the homework and see if anybody had any questions about it. Uh, let's go here, and I highlighted Valentine's Day in pink just because I thought it was cute. Um, so this is homework two. Uh, did anybody have any issues with homework two? Any of these problems to give anybody any problems? Yeah. Uh, just go over 3A. Like I understand it, I get it. It's just a little confusing. 3A, yeah. So uh, there's a couple of ways that you could solve this problem. So I'll show a couple ways. Um, let me do it by hand first. So we got. So in general, I'd advise you guys uh, write down what you know. Like when solving these problems, like if you know a voltage, write it down. If you know a current, write it down. Because typically you'll see, oh, you have more than you you think you have, like to solve these problems, and uh, then it'll make solving them really easy. So that's the problem right there, and we want to find the voltages. So let me change colors and the camera and full screen all right so we've got this circuit right here this was uh what did you say homework two three a all right so uh first of all this is what i'm saying right write down what you know so we know or we should know that since this is a battery right the minus terminal is connected to ground and the plus terminal is nine volts that's this whole node right here will be at nine volts right now, uh, one way you could solve this problem is you can look at uh, both loops separately, right? Like first, I see on this side, oh, I've got an 8K and a 10K uh, connected in series. Um, and then on this side, I've got a 4K and a 5K connected in series, right? So if I wanted to draw an equivalent circuit here, I could, and it would look something like this. Or on this side, I've got one resistor, and this side, I've got my other where this is now 18k right because I added those two in series and this is 9k because I added those two in series and then this is still 9 volts so now from here what you could do is you can say okay so over here I've got 9 volts 0 volts so I know my currents flowing through this 9k right and uh, if I wanted to find what that current is let's call it I1 I1 is gonna be 9 volts minus 0 volts divided by 9k which gives me 1 milliamp right and then on the other side of the circuit I still know I have 9 volts here and I have 0 volts here but now I'm have my current on this side I2 which is a different current flowing through this 18k resistor and that would be 9 volts minus 0 volts divided by 18k and that would give me half a milliamp right so now I have my currents and from what we talked about last time as far as uh, equivalent circuits right we know that this I this I1 well maybe we don't know this but now you will know I1 is gonna flow over here whatever we solved so over here we have one milliamp flowing right and then over here we have I2 or 0.5 milliamps flowing and now you can find out what the voltage drops are across these resistors, right? So if I know I have one milliamp flowing through this 5K, I go the voltage across this V1 is one milliamp times 5K, which is five volts. So then I know this voltage here is five volts. And then over here, I've got 0.5 milliamps flowing through 10K. So I could call this V2 if I wanted to, the voltage across this resistor. And I'd say V2 is 0.5 milliamps times 10K, and that also gives me 5 volts. So this voltage here would also be 5 volts. 
and that's it, right? Does anybody have any questions about anything I just did? That makes sense. In the second quarter, in the first demand, how do you like, um, determine the current flow this direction? So, uh, like I said, right? Um, so, so basically, current flows from higher voltage to lower voltage, right? Yeah. Well, that works across any number of resistors. So if I know that the voltage here is 9 volts and I know that the voltage here is 0 volts, even though I don't know this voltage, I definitely know it's between 9 and 0. So I know that the, cur the current's going to flow down through the circuit this way. And the same thing over here. I know this is 9, I know this is 0. So since I know that, because right, what you have in these circuits is whatever your power supply is, right, in this case it's a 9 volt battery, you won't have any voltages greater than that. That's the most voltage that you could possibly have because that's, that's the power supply. We don't have any amplifiers or anything in here. So if I have a, uh, a voltage source of 9 volts, I already know that that's the maximum voltage I'm going to see in this circuit. So this voltage has to be less than 9 volts. I mean, there's a resistor right there, 10K, and I feel there's less current at 10K. So it should be flowing in the universe. Um, repeat, sorry, repeat what you were saying? Right. So the current should be flowing in that direction because that's where there's no light. So, um, are you saying you think that there should be less current flowing on this side than on this side? No, no. Current should be flowing in that direction. So current... Flowing upwards. He's saying, yeah, he's saying for that loop it should be flowing counterclockwise. Yeah, counterclockwise. So the reason why it's not is because this, this node right here is 9 volts and this node right here is zero volts. So regardless, current is gonna flow from the nine to the zero. It doesn't matter what, uh, so why is it that you think that it should flow the other way? Like what is making you think that? Because uh, the resistor giving so much resistance to like, uh, like you said, current flows in the direction where there's less current. So I would imagine that the 10 k volt resistor is where there's less current and it needs more current. And also the source towards the ground, like the wire attaching, it has like zero volts, so the current should try to flow. So basically, um, I get what you're saying. Uh, this, this branch, like this, this loop of the circuit has less current flowing than this loop because the total resistance on this side of the circuit is 18K, right? And the total resistance on this side is 9K. So that's, when I draw this equivalent, this is really, this circuit right here is basically better described by this circuit here. And so the reason why uh, we break it down into series resistances is so that we can find the current flowing. And you're correct that, you know, the current wants to flow through the path of least resistance. However, this current is greater than this current because this path has less resistance. That doesn't mean current won't still flow in this other path. It's just less current because there's more resistance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes. Uh, I don't, I don't think I asked you to. I think I just asked for the voltages, right? Yeah, that, that's all. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't ask for it, so yeah, all I wanted you guys to do is find those voltages. Um, were there any other questions regarding that problem or any other problems? Um, how is that problem different from a parallel circuit uh, where you can treat it as two different loops? So uh, what's interesting is, so I was going to actually talk about that. Um, these two resistors are in parallel. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, so these, so that was what I was going to talk about. So what did I say, right, for uh, parallel resistors? Parallel resistors, did everybody see that my first video failed, by the way? Like, I, I had to make another video. Um, I really hope that doesn't happen today. I, it, it says that the mic is active. Like, this right here means that the mic is on and connected. So I'm just really hoping that we get done with this lecture and there's audio. Anyways, uh... So yeah, basically what I said about uh, series resistors was that 
if they're connected by one node, they share one node, and the same current flows through them, then those that's, those resistors are connected in series. So these, this 4K and this 5K, they share this one node, and the same current flows through them. Uh, therefore, they're connected in series, right? Parallel was they share two nodes, and they have the same voltage across them, right? Well, these two resistors, they both share this node, and they both share ground. So they're connected in parallel. Right, so I could I could redraw this circuit right here, just like this. This is my nine volt source, and I could draw it exactly like this, and that's exactly the same thing, even though it looks very different. Right, I got my nine k and I've got my eighteen k and I've got my ground. Those two circuits are the exact same circuit. So then you could take these two, and combine them in parallel. And then that would uh, give you some equivalent resistance. I don't know what is it, like 4.5k or 7k or something in there. Um, uh, let's do it. 6k. Because that's how I did it at first, and it didn't work. So that's why I'm asking, like, what's the difference? Yeah, 6k exactly. So it's 6k. So it didn't work. So my guess of why it didn't work is probably because when you went back to solve the other one, you did something wrong. And so if you were to solve it this way, here, let's get another, uh, another page and we'll solve it this way. So now we're down to nine volts and then this is 9k and 18k and if I combine those in parallel I'm gonna get a new equivalent resistor and that resistor is gonna be 6k so what you just did is you did this right so you got to this point I imagine and then you said okay I have nine volts here and I have zero volts here I'm gonna find my current flowing here that nine volts minus zero volts over 6k is going to give me 1.5 milliamps okay so that current 1.5 milliamps that is the current that's flowing in the entire circuit because you just reduced the whole circuit to one resistor right. so part of that you know when we go back over here part of that 1.5 milliamps is going to flow this way and the other part of it is going to flow this way right. and so now when you go back and try and break it down and figure out you know that's so you see right I found 1 milliamp and 1 and 0.5 milliamps so that's the total is the sum of those two right so if you wanted to solve it this way now you know the current the total current flowing in the circuit um, you would basically have to go backwards now and draw it out again because now you know you basically know that you have 1.5 milliamps flowing right here, but you still don't know what's flowing here and what's flowing here. So in this case, you still have to take the 9 volts over the 9K and see, oh, okay, I have 1 milliamp flowing here, and then this 9 volts over this 18K and say, okay, I have 0.5 milliamps flowing here. And then from there, you open it back up to the series resistors, and then you can find the voltage drops. Oh, okay. So I skipped that. Sorry. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. You never have no, I only asked for the voltages. Yeah, I just I, I don't I don't think I included the finding the currents in the instructions because I just wanted you guys to find the voltages. Um, in the future, I'm probably gonna ask to find the currents just because it's it's a good habit. Like it's good to like, because I I noticed something. So actually, that's something I wanted to talk about from the first homework. I think I messaged in the Google group about it. Uh, talking basically about things that I saw people were making mistakes on. So I just want to touch on those briefly. Um, I'm not obviously going to single anybody out. I just generally saw these mistakes. Uh, I think it was this one. That's not it. Lecture three, homework one. Okay, so it's this one. So formatting overall was pretty uh, pretty good. Um, basically, for, for a lot of people, um, some people didn't realize I wanted to actually see LT Spice simulations. Like, I saw a couple people like took the simulations and like wrote them down, but that doesn't really tell me anything because I don't know that you actually ran it in LT Spice. So, like, what you should do is 
take a screenshot of it and just like paste it into your homework document so that I can actually see that you ran the circuit. Um, as far as integrating LT Spice simulations, what I mean when I say this is when you solve a problem, like I want to see the circuit simulation results and the hand calculations on the same page. So a lot of you guys did uh, the hand calculations like all together and the simulations all together and like as efficient as that seems, then I have to like flip back and forth all six circuits to see, you know, whether they actually match your simulation results. So like please put simulation results and hand calculations on the same page for any given circuit so that I can very easily verify. Yes. So let's say there's like three parts in or three parts in three, right? If we did one LC size for all three uh, sections of three, that's fine. And then we did a separate schematic for two. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. As long as your hand calculations for a particular circuit are on the same page as the simulations, I don't care. Uh, units, I noticed some people um, had a problem with milliamps and microamps. Uh, just make sure you guys keep track of those because uh, if you get the wrong units, it's, it's technically wrong and I'll mark you wrong. I won't mark you off like crazy points, but like if the answer is 5 milliamps and you got 0.5 milliamps because you didn't keep track of the decimals, then that's wrong. So I have to mark it wrong. Uh, current direction was a big one I saw. So let me come back over here. I just want to specify. If I'm looking at a resistor, right? and I say this is voltage one and this is voltage two. And I want to find the current flowing from voltage one to voltage two. I say V1 minus V2 over R. That gives me my current flowing in this direction, okay? If I wanted to find the current flowing the other direction, then I would do V2 minus V1 over R. If you're finding the current in a particular direction, Right? So say I'm going from V2 to V1. I don't know why it's like recognizing that as like a face. Anyways, if you're trying to find the, volt, the, the current flowing from V2 to V1 and you use this formula right here, and V2 is greater than V1, right? This should come out positive. It shouldn't be negative. I saw a lot of people where they were taking the current flowing in a particular direction and that was the correct direction, but they were still getting a negative current somehow. If, you're, if you know the direction the current's flowing, you shouldn't have a negative current because negative current indicates that it's flowing the opposite direction. So like for example, I saw like say it was nine volts, a resistor of one K and then zero volts. People would like define the current flowing here and then say it was negative nine volts over one K or something like that. That's not right. It should be nine volts minus zero volts. Whatever this voltage is minus whatever this voltage is and then you get, so you'd be nine volts minus zero volts over one K. And so that was just something to note. Make sure you're keeping track of what direction the current's flowing. If you know the direction's flowing from here to here, you should not have a negative answer. If you have a negative answer, then something, you did something wrong because it, it's, that's the direction of the current, so the current should be positive. But yeah. It's definitely possible to have a negative, uh, or possible to have a negative voltage. You can have negative current, but if you have negative current, if you were trying to find the current flowing from V2 to V1, say, and this comes out negative, then that means that the current is actually flowing this way. Right. Okay. Voltage, negative, positive, that could happen, but yeah. So I have a question for, uh, just a quick question for three A of homework one. Homework one? Zero current, right? Three A, homework one, that's right. When you ask for a direction, do we give one direction or do we give either a wave? No, there'd be no direction because there's no current, okay. right? In a real life circuit, you'll never have, if this were the case and you plug something in like this in a real circuit, you wouldn't have zero current. You'd have some crazy low current because those wouldn't both be exactly five volts. This might be like 5.0001 and this might be like 4.999. So you'd have some really small current flowing. But for the sake of example, I wanted you guys to like notice if the voltage on either side of the resistor is the same, then it's zero, no current, right? So if for whatever reason I ever ask a question like this again and it's no current, then you don't have to draw an arrow because there's no current, right? All right, uh, let's see what else I said. Battery and voltage source polarity. Yeah, so I noticed a lot of people um, with this homework, uh, 
say I, I put like a, a, this three volts, this source is flipped, right? A lot of people didn't notice that, so they put it like upright with the plus here and the minus here, and they got the problem wrong. So pay attention to the polarity of the voltage source. It looks really similar if you look at it really quickly, but like take your time and take a look like, oh, okay, that's flipped, so I need to know that this is negative three, right? A lot of people made that mistake. Uh, so in the future, just be sure that you, you note the polarity of the source. Uh, and then misunderstanding which V to use in Ohm's Law. Uh, what I mean by that is I noticed a lot of people, um, so you guys had like a resistor, say, and this was V1 and this was V2 and this was R. And a lot of people said like, oh, the current flowing here is V1 over R and the current flowing here is V2 over R. Well, that doesn't make any sense. The current is based on the difference across the resistor. So in V equals IR, this V is not V1 and it's not V2. It's the difference between V1 and V2, right? So when you see V equals IR, the V is the difference. The, it's the, how much voltage drop is across the resistor. That's what we call it. We call it a voltage drop. So if V1 was 10 volts and V2 was 8 volts, then there was a 2 volt voltage drop across the resistor, right? So that's, that drop is the V that you're looking for in Ohm's Law. A lot of people I saw took 10 volts over R and found some current, and then 8 volts over R and found some other current. That's not how it works. It's the difference of voltage. Because you basically, right, I, I said it, it's like a pressure. You have 10 volts of like, you know, pressure pushing the charge on this side and 8 volts pushing it on this side. So that difference determines how much current is, current is flowing. This 10 volts doesn't mean anything unless we know what this voltage is because it's, it's depending on how, like how much charge is being pushed on either side of the resistor, which way the current's gonna flow. All right, so I just wanted to you know, go over those things. Keep those in mind when you do the homeworks. Um, and then let's take one more look at homework two. If nobody else has any questions, then we'll go into something new. Any other issues with this homework? 2B, this one right here? Yeah, let me do that one real quick and then we'll move on. So it's one milliamp, 10K, 10K, okay. Is that right? And then the voltage is VB. Okay. So first thing I said to do is combine the resistors in parallel, right? Well, may, some of you may or may not have noticed, if you have two equal resistors, the, the parallel resistance is half. It's gonna work out that way every time. So if this was 20K and 20K, it'd be 10K. Since it's 10K and 10K, then the equivalent resistance is 5K. Okay, so just to skip the math, uh, this equivalent circuit would look something like this, where this is 5K, 1 milliamp, right? And now we're trying to find VB. So, that's, so this is the same voltage. Whatever this VB is, that's going to be this VB, because this is an equivalent circuit, okay? So now I know I have 1 milliamp flowing this way, which means it's coming up through the resistor, right? So that means if I know that the current's flowing up through the resistor, I know that this voltage has to be greater than this voltage, right? Which means this voltage is going to be negative up here because this is zero, right? So if I want to find, you know, V equals IR, so I go V equals IR, I, and then I know that this V is going to be the voltage drop across that resistor, okay? So V is equal to 1 milliamp times 5K, which gives me 5 volts. That means the difference of voltage from this point to this point is five volts. And now I know that this voltage is zero and this has to be less because the current is flowing this way, right? That means this is negative five volts, right? Does that make sense? Is what I did make sense? Uh, yeah, but like, what I did was I, like, I saw it go down for some reason my brain thought like, oh, just make it negative and like, not necessarily Yeah, so basically, uh, so you got negative 5 volts. Yeah. 
Okay, well, however it works for you, I mean, if it's consistent and it's correct, then that's fine with me. Uh, but, but what you do definitely need to notice is that the voltage, since it's flowing down through this node, that means it has to flow up through, through this node. And if it's flowing up through this node, then that means that this voltage has to be greater than this voltage. We know that the drop across the resistor is 5, so then this has to be negative 5, right? And then now we can come back over here. We know this is negative 5, and then we can find the currents flowing through both of these branches. They'll be equal. So whatever it was over here, right, it was 1 milliamp then these will each have half a milliamp flowing, right? Because no matter what, that's another thing you'll notice. So with, with equal resistors that are in parallel, the equivalent will always be half, and they'll always have the same current flowing through them if the resistance is equal. And the reason is, the volt, we already know for parallel resistors, the voltage across them is the same. So if the voltage across them is the same and the resistance is the same, then by Ohm's law, then the current has to be the same. Does that make sense? You can do that too. Okay. Yeah, like if you if you were to redraw this as this. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. So this is also the same thing. You can you can do the same thing. Everyone understands that this one milliamp flowing down and negative one milliamp flowing up is the exact same thing. All right. Good then. All right, cool. All right, so let's move on to some new stuff. It's not super new. I've already kind of talked about uh, Kirchhoff's current law. But I'm going to go into it a little bit more today. Then we're going to talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law as well. So I can prepare you guys for the homework that's due Wednesday. I think it's pretty short. It's just a cut like a bunch of circuits that are like super quick using these two rules basically and what we've learned so far and then one circuit down here that looks kind of scary but it's just a matter of knowing um, how to combine parallel resistors and series resistors and it makes it super simple so one thing I want to make sure everybody understands before I even go into this is when I have like say I have a circuit and I want to replace like I want to find an equivalent resistance right so say I have a circuit that looks like this and I want to find my equivalent series resistance. I'm basically cutting this little piece out of the circuit, right? This piece right here, which is just two resistors. And I'm replacing it with one resistor, right? So when I cut those two resistors out and I say, I don't know, 1K, 1K, and I combine them and I get a 2K, I just take that piece and plug it right back in where I took the two resistors out. And that's why I can take this and just put uh, one resistor in here. And now these two, if this is REQ and this is R1 and R2, then these two circuits are equivalent. Now with parallel resistors, it's the same exact thing. But I just want to make sure everybody knows exactly how to replace them. Okay, so I'm going to take these two resistors out of here and replace them with an equivalent. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this, this piece of circuitry, right, where these two resistors share these two nodes, and I'm going to replace it with just one single resistor. So when I pull this out, right, that ground didn't come with it. In most cases it will because of the way that they're connected, but like for example, in, in your homework, this is why I'm getting at this, you have these three uh, resistors right here, right? The, the three 3K three resistors. If you were to pull those 3Ks out, right, this whole chunk can be replaced by one resistor, right? You find the equivalent and you just plop that one resistor in here. And now what you have is you're going to end up with two series resistors. You, well, yeah, that's also in series with this. So you'd have three series resistors in here, and then you can combine those, right? That's that's. I just want to. I just wanted to make that point clear that, like, when you pull these three series or these three parallel resistors out, you're replacing them with one series resistor. Just keep track of like what's being pulled out and what's being replaced, so that you don't, you know, you don't get confused. Like, you know, you're taking these three resistors out, you replace them with one equivalent, and then 
draw the circuit because you'll see, okay, the circuit just got a lot simpler, right? Don't try and do it in your head. It's not worth it. It might take up a lot of paper, but, you know, that's the best way to solve these problems is draw the equivalent circuits and you'll see, yes? So say I'm sitting in the lab and I know I need a one kilo ohm resistor, uh -huh. but I only have three kilo ohm resistors. Oh, okay. So I'll use three in parallel and it's going to give me the exact same result. Right. That's the reason for this. Oh, okay. Like in a real schematic, when people are really designing things, they'll break it down to the simplest that they can. Right. But like in lab, if you go to the lab and you're like, oh my gosh, I need a 1K and the drawer is empty. Well, I can use two 2Ks or I can use three 3Ks and it's going to give me the same result. Right. Like that's, that's the reason for this. Yeah, I was Right, because you're like, what, what, what the heck would be the point of this? It, it, it could also be that you need to power three LEDs or something, and you want three branches with the same, the same current flowing through them. It could be any number of applications, but one application is like, oh, like I, I know personally I've done this. I just did it today. This guy needed a 268 ohm resistor, but we didn't have that, but we had 234 ohm resistors, so I used those in series and it worked. So that that's... That's the application of this stuff, but one of the applications at least. All right, so now let's get on to KVL, KCL. All right. So you had one component that was 168 ohms. That seems like a really weird number for a resistor. So resistors are, a lot of components and things need a very specific current. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for instance, this guy was using a, a regulator. Mm -hmm. It basically takes in a particular voltage and outputs a different voltage. Yeah. And based on the resistors that you connect to it, mm -hmm. it outputs different voltages. So if he wanted uh, a two volt output for the regulator, mm -hmm. um, then he had to use like one, one kilo ohm. If he wanted a three volt output, he needed to use like 700 ohms. Mm -hmm. And so if he wanted, what he wanted was a five volt output and it called for 268 ohms, which is like a really precise value, right? Uh -huh. But you can, you can buy 268 ohm resistors or which we had 234 ohm resistors, so I just connected them in series, and that creates a 268 ohm resistor. Uh -huh. So it, it it seems like a very, you know, obscure number. It's pretty random, but but a lot of applications use very random numbers for resistors. All right. I just use very whole numbers to make your lives easier. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, no, you'll see all kinds of crazy resistor values out there. Which one? No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's because it's not being used for anything. Like it's it's literally being used to set the voltage. So all right. Uh, so first, I've talked about KCL today. We're going to talk about KCL and KVL. So this is Kirchhoff's current law. This is Kirchhoff's voltage law. So basically, uh, these two laws are going to be used all throughout the class, all throughout any time you're doing circuits. Uh, Kirchhoff's current law I've gone over already, right? It says, if I have a node, right, and say I have some branches in that node, right? If I have a current flowing into this node, that current, I, I'll call it I total, is equal to the sum of the two currents flowing out of the node, right? Or the three currents flowing out of the node, however many currents are flowing out of that node. So if I say, you know, IT and I call this I1 and I2, then I know that IT is equal to I1 plus I2. So this is the way I've been teaching it to you guys thus far. This isn't exactly the way that Kirchhoff's current law is stated if you look it up on YouTube or you Google it the way that you'll actually see it stated is that the sum of all the currents leaving a node is zero, right? And what that basically means is if I have a node just like this, same thing, and I draw all of the currents exiting that node, and I call this I1, and I call this I2, and I call this I3, then the sum of those is equal to zero. So you would write that as I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. But to me, that's not very useful. I don't, I don't like this because now you're doing extra math. But if you wanted to write it this way, what you could say is that 
Right. Remember I told you guys, right? If I have a current flowing in one direction and I just call it negative, then now we're saying it's flowing in the other direction, right? So if I redid this, uh, I could call this, instead of calling it I1 flowing, flowing this way, I could call it minus I1 flowing this way, right? And so if I do that, I end up with this case, right? Where this I1 is flowing here, minus I1, and now this equation becomes I2 plus I3 minus I1 equals zero, or I2 plus I3 equals I1, which is exactly what I did up here, right? It's I1 plus I2 is equal to the total. So that's what I've been doing th thus far, and that's really important. Uh, it, it comes about in all kinds of problems where you need to figure out, like, okay, I know the current flowing here, and then I know my total current, but so then I can find I2, right? If I know two of these currents, then I can find the third one. This is going to come up time and time again uh, when we do, like, for example, on your homework. Let's look at one of these that uses it. Uh, so, for example, this one. So if I look at this node right here, right, and I know I have 5 milliamps flowing into that node, if I find one of these other currents, then I know the other one because I know that the sum of these two currents is equal to 5 milliamps, right? So that's, that's one example of where uh, KCL could be used. Uh, it could also be used in a circuit like this. So say I have 3 volts right here, right? I know this is 3 volts. And I find the current flowing right here. And then I, I know, here, let's just, you know what, let's solve F right now. This will be a good application of uh, KCL. Or do we apply that to 3A on the last one I have to do? 3A? Yeah, 3A. You don't want to solve the homework problem for 3A? <laughs> we can't solve the homework problem in class. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could use it here. Um, you may not need to use it here. This is the thing with these tools. Like, there's, n there's not many problems where you're like, there's only one way to solve it. A lot of these circuits, there's like, I'm going to teach you KCL, I'm going to teach you KVL, I've already taught you, you know, Ohm's Law, you're going to learn all these other analysis techniques, and then it's up to you to decide which one you like the best, or which one, I mean, obviously on quizzes and homeworks, I'm going to say, solve it using this method, solve it using this method, to test that you know how to use all of the methods. Um, but the reality is, with these circuits, you can kind of use whatever you want, and uh, whatever you're most comfortable with. Like, if I were solving this circuit, I definitely wouldn't use like breaking these down into series, I would use a different technique, but that's because I, we haven't gotten to that technique yet. But, oh, cool. but yeah, another thing, like like I said at the beginning, like make sure you write down what you know from the very beginning of the circuit, because then, you know, if you know that 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 node is nine volts, and then you know these are series resistors, and you break them down into equivalents, the circuit becomes much simpler. So always start by like writing down the things that you know. Um, but. I want to solve this other one just because it seems like a really good KCL problem. So I'll solve F. And I'll come back to this sheet of paper. So say I asked you, uh, what's the current flowing through V6? Let's say I wanted to, like that's, let's say I asked that question. Like, what is the current flowing through V6 in this case? From the start, we have no idea. But using KCL, we can figure it out. So let me just draw the circuit. So this is homework 3, 1F. Got voltage source, 12K, 10K, 3 volt. Ten K twelve K. All right. So I want to know the current flowing through this battery, right? So I know that the current flowing through that battery is equal to the current flowing through this resistor plus the current flowing through this resistor, right? Well, right off the bat, I know this is three volts. I know this is zero volts. So I can already find this current. Right, I can find this current by going 3 volts minus 0 volts over 10K. And that's going to give me, I don't know, 3.333 milliamps or something. Or 0.333 milliamps. Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. 
it just gives me 0.3 milliamps. Is that right? Do you ever have a preference for 0.3 milliamps or uh, 300 microamps? Uh, I don't have a preference. Okay. I it doesn't matter to me. Okay. I don't use microamps that often in here because we haven't talked about it that much. Like I mean, it's not. It's just another unit, right? Sure. But I, I typically keep things in milliamps. It also depends on the application. Like a lot of uh, like integrated circuits applications will be in terms of microamps and even nanoamps because they're really small currents. Uh, most DC circuits and stuff that you'll build on the breadboard in the lab will be milliamps. So, uh, But yeah, this is the same thing. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, okay, so that's one current. So we'll call that I1. And then we'll call this one I2, right? Well, now I know this is zero volts, and I know that I'm dropping five volts because this battery's flipped, so this is minus five volts, right? So now I know the current I2 is three volts minus negative five volts over 12K. So that's going to give me eight volts over 12K. Gives me 0.666 milliamps. Okay, so now I know I2 and I know I1. So if I say I1 plus I2 is equal to, let's call this IX, we don't know what that one was. It's 0 0.66 milliamps plus 0 0.3 milliamps. So now I know that that IX is 0 0.96 milliamps, right? So that's, that's an application of where, you know, KCL would be used to find this current. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what it was unless you used LT Spice. Okay, so that's Kirchhoff's current law. We've talked about that one over and over again. You'll use that one over and over again. It's kind of intuitive, right? It, it, makes, it makes sense, right? If I have some amount of current flowing here and then it just branches off, it wouldn't make sense that any of it would get lost, right? It gets conserved. So some of it flows through here, some of it flows through here, right? All right, so now let's go back to KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. We have not talked about this one yet, so this would be new material. So Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the sum, so this is basically the sum of all the currents. Here, let me write it. I'll write it by hand. Sum of all currents out of a node equals zero, right? And then Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us the sum of all voltage drops in a loop equals zero. Okay? So what do I mean by that? So let's take one of the circuits from... Uh, the previous homework again. Let's go back to the previous homework. And let's look at one of these dividers like C. So if I take that circuit, I'm going to draw it real quick. One K, five K, twelve volts. All right. So this circuit right here, right? Sum of all voltage drops in a loop is equal to zero. So I know in this circuit, since this is 12 volts, current's going to flow down to ground, which is zero volts here, right? So I can say my voltage drops, we already know that they're equal to I times R, right? So I'm going to call this current I, right? And what I have is I have a voltage drop across this resistor, so here's the first thing that you want to do when you solve these problems with, with Kirchhoff's voltage law. You want to label plus to minus of the direction of current flow. So I know my current's flowing this way through this resistor. So that's plus and that's minus, right? That basically is telling me that the voltage here is higher than the voltage here. Same thing with this resistor, plus to minus, because I know that this voltage is higher than this voltage. All right? And so then what you end up doing is you're trying to see when I when I run into a component is the voltage going up across that component or is the voltage going down across that component and that tells you whether or not you're going to add or subtract 
when you write this equation. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an equation for this loop using KVL, using Kirchhoff's voltage law. And so what I'm going to do is first look from this node to this node, right? I'm going from ground across the battery. Am I dropping voltage or am I gaining voltage? In this case, I'm gaining. So I'm going to write a plus 12 volts. Then I already know that current is flowing this way through this resistor, which means I'm going to drop voltage across this resistor, right? So I'm going to subtract 5K times I, okay? Because that, that 5K times I is my voltage drop across that resistor. We don't know I yet. Okay, but we do know that the voltage drop is going to be 5k times whatever I is. Okay, then we go to this 1k and we do the exact same thing. We say, okay, so I know that uh, my, my 1k uh, current's flowing through it this way, so this voltage has to be higher than this voltage, so I'm dropping voltage, right? So minus 1k times I. So that's all the voltage drops in the loop, and then we say that's equal to zero. And now we can solve for I just like this. We can just solve for I using algebra. So grouping like terms, right? I could say 12 volts minus 6K times I, right? Because I'm subtracting a 5K and a 1K equals zero. I add 6K times I to the other side, right? And now I divide by 6K on both sides. Cancel these and I get that I is two milliamps. Right? So that's because um, amps, the unit, is volts over ohms. That's right. That's right. And I'm dividing 12 volts by 6,000 ohms, so I get milli. So that's KVL. KVL tells us that the sum of the voltage drops in a loop is zero. And you write that equation first for, this, for these currents. For this current, this is one current flowing through the loop, I. And you just have to know... Am I going up by voltage or am I going down by voltage at each point, uh, each, each component I look at? And then you can write this loop. And basically what, what we just did, right, when we did this and we combined like terms, that was the same thing as finding the equivalent resistance of the series resistors, right? We, we ended up, algebra brought us to a point where we had 12 volts equals 6K times I, which is the exact same thing that we would have gotten if we combined those in series and just drew uh, an equivalent circuit where this was 6K and this was 12 volts, right? So it's kind of just a shortcut algebraically for, for finding the current flowing in a loop without having to do um, all the other stuff like combining the resistors in series. It works great when you have like several resistors, right? Say we had like seven, seven or eight resistors in series here, you could go you know, 12 volts minus 1K times I minus 2K times I and you just combine them all but really, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing as just adding them in series. But this is just called Kirchhoff's voltage law. And the reason why it's useful is we're going to use it later in the semester uh, with circuits that have several loops. And you can basic. do you guys remember systems of equations from algebra where you have two equations, two unknowns, you solve? That's where this is really, really useful. Because say I give you a circuit that looks something like this. Like you got a voltage here, some resistance, and then another... I don't know, another battery there, another resistance, and now we have this two-loop circuit. Well, I don't know how to combine these in series, right? I can't do anything with this. There's, there's, there's too much going on. But what I do know is that I've got I1 flowing here, and I've got I2 flowing here. And you go around these loops, right? And you make these equations for loop one, and you make an equation for loop two. And what you end up with is two equations and two unknowns. And then you can solve for I1 and I2 like that. That's called mesh analysis. We're going to get into that. Uh, I don't know if it's next week or two weeks from now. But that uses, that's where KVL is used the most, uh, the most often. But I'm going to show you guys another uh, place where it's used uh, right here in a second. Let me uh, see when we're covering mesh. Uh, so next class, I'm going to talk about superposition. You guys are really going to like superposition. It's fun. No, I like it. Okay. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it better than mesh analysis. Okay. Mesh, mesh analysis uses a bunch of garbage like algebra, like two equations, two unknowns. Say there's three or four loops, and you have four equations, four unknowns. Like I'm not going to do that to you, but that's a lot of algebra. Um, but yeah, so next class we're going to talk about superposition and then the class after that we're going to talk about mesh 
analysis. And so it sounds scary, but literally all it is is exactly what I just drew. It's, it's literally just this. Um, and you just write the two equations, you solve for the two unknowns. In my uh, EE330 class, he gave us uh, six equations, six unknowns, mesh analysis. Isn't that just rude? Like, that's just so unnecessary. Um, but yeah, okay, does anybody have any questions about Kirchhoff's current law or Kirchhoff's voltage law? Uh, why is my battery running low? It's literally plugged in. Is it not? Literally plugged in. It's this, huh? No, it wasn't. It wasn't plugged in all the way. Wow. Good thing it gave me a, a reminder or something. <laughs> Uh, okay, I've been, man, this is my first semester, guys, teaching. I have all these technical difficulties. So frustrating, whatever. All right, we got it plugged in. Are there any questions on KVL, KCL? Yes. Who's I don't know. Let, let's look it up. A uh, German physicist who firmly established the theory of spectrum analysis. Okay, that doesn't sound like what we're interested in. Well, what are we looking at? Oh, yeah, okay, so was a German physicist who contributed to the fundamental understanding of electrical circuits. Okay, so yeah, this is the guy. Yeah, I guess he came up with these theorems. They work. Uh, I don't know who Ohm is either. I know that there's Ohm. This has got to be a guy. Yeah, George Ohm. George There's a lot of German Yeah, there's Alice, Alessandro Volta is the guy who the Volt is named after. Is he German as well? Who, Volta? Volta's Italian. Yeah. And then Amp Ampere is a guy too. <laughs> He's French. Oh, okay. Yeah, so all the stuff we use is named after all these guys. I had an engineering teacher in high school who did a unit on digital electronics, and he introduced it by saying, all of the laws you're about to learn are named after dead white guys. <laughs> well, he's not wrong. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know exactly what any of them contributed. Um, but I imagine all of them had meaningful contributions to our understanding of circuits. One of them is probably responsible for why we have cur current flowing the wrong way in all of our calculations. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess it makes, if you, if you were to try and solve all these circuits, right, if I stopped telling you voltage was flowing from plus to minus and it was actually flowing backwards, everything's going to end up negative, and then it's just a pain. So I guess this is an easier way to analyze things anyways. What's it called? If you, it literally just negative because you say it's negative. Yeah, I guess that's true. Well, did anybody have any questions about this? Because otherwise I'm just going to solve some examples for the next couple minutes. Did anybody want me to solve any more from the next homework, like one example from the next homework before we give the quiz? The very last one. This one? Nah, I can't solve that one. <laughs> this one? Yeah, let's do that one real quick and then uh, I'll give the quiz. And guys, I don't mean to solve these to like, I don't want people to just copy my solutions. Obviously some people will, but the whole point is so that you can see how I approach these problems so that you know how to approach problems. And hopefully you copy down my solution, but also like understanding what you're doing as you copy it down. I th is today Monday? Yeah. All right, I think Wednesday I'll do the demo, the circuit demo in class. Like uh, build a little circuit under the camera and...
Um, all right, so that's 2K. And I just told you guys to find all the voltages. Okay, so let's solve this one. So if I was going to solve this problem... Oh, is this the one that I just did? No, you did F. Oh, I did F. Oh, oh, with the current. Right, right. Okay. All right, cool. So first, I noticed that this is a battery, right, minus connected to ground, so I know this is 3 volts. And what we're trying to find is this uh, voltage here, basically. Well, I know that there's 1 milliamp flowing through the 2K resistor, right? Which means my voltage drop across this resistor is 2K times 1 milliamp, which is 2 volts. So I know that 2 volts got dropped here, and then I know that this is 1 volt. That's it. Uh, I guess I, uh, it looks a little more complicated than it is. <laughs> All right, well, we might have time for one more if you guys want to do one more. We, I mean, we got time. It's just taking away from your quiz time. Here, you know what? I want to solve this one because this is the other type of uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law problem. I'm not going to solve that one. I'm going to do a similar one. But it's a KVL problem that you need KVL to solve, right? Because the problem with this circuit is we don't know either of the voltages because we don't neither uh, side of the battery is connected to ground so let me put 3k 4k and then like 8 volts all right so what I do know is that this voltage Let's call it V1, and we'll call this voltage V2, right? Well, I know that V1 uh, is equal to V2 plus 8 volts, right? V2 is 8 volts m less than V1 because of the way that the battery is uh, uh, connected. It's, it's based on the polarity, right. right? And then I know that my current... Uh, flowing over here is V1 over uh, 4K. That's the current flowing in the circuit. So now uh, I can solve this problem, uh, or I guess I need one more equation. My third equation would be uh, that this current, right, that's also I, because it's the same loop. I is equal to 0 volts minus V2 over 3k right so now what I have is I have three equations and I have three unknowns and I can basically solve for all the unknowns so I knew that this was equal to I I knew that this was also equal to I so I can set those equal to each other so I can say minus v2 over 3k is equal to v1 over 4k right and then I've got this and I've got this my two equations and two unknowns. So if I were to multiply uh, both sides by 3k here, let's say I just multiply by 3k on both sides, this goes away, I get minus v2 is equal to 0 0.75 times v1, right? And now I can take 0 0.75 uh, 5 times V1 here. Let me multiply by negative 1 also on both sides. So I get V2 is equal to minus 0 0.75 times V1. Sorry. So now uh, I can take this V2 is equal to this and plug it in right here. So what I get is V1 is equal to negative 0 0.75 V1 plus 8 volts. I can uh, add 0.75 V1 to both sides, those cancel. So over here I get V1 plus 0.75 V1 equals 8 volts. And then I can distribute, right? I pull a V1 out and I get uh, 1 plus 0 0.75 equals 8. V1 equals 8 divided by 1.75. 
Let's see. Really? Because you said V2 is equal to, um, can you move the page down a little bit? Uh, V2 is equal to negative 0.75 V1. Right. Oh, okay. I think it should work out. Yeah. So if I go A divided by 1.75, I get 4.57 volts for V1. So now I have V1, and I know that V1 is equal to V2 plus 8. So if I plug in here, I get 4.57 volts equals V2 plus 8. I can subtract 8 volts from that, and I get the other voltage. Negative 3.43. So now I have V1 and I have V2. That means that uh, V1, what did I get? 4.57 volts. And V2, I got negative 3.43 volts. And you see that those are 8 volts apart, right? This minus 8 gives me this. And now uh, my current was equal to V1 over 4K. So I can just take 4.57 over 4K, and that'll give me I. I get, I keep multiplying today, what is wrong with me? Divided by 1.14 milliamps. And so then that means that this current right here that's flowing in the circuit is 1.14 milliamps, and I'm done. All right? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, you would. Because then you know, well, the problem is this, actually, not in this case, because this these resistors are not in parallel. They're in series. Yeah. Because the same current is flowing through them, and they both share the ground node. So what you could really do is you could just combine these th this 3K and this 4K and see that you have a 7K resistor, and then you can, um, you can draw an equivalent circuit for it. Uh, but you can't, uh, what you have to see here is that the, the, no matter what these resistances are, this could be 30K and this could be 4K, the same current is flowing through them because they're in the same loop, right? In the other case where we had the two resistors in parallel, uh, right, like something where they're like connected like this, the same current will flow through them because this voltage is the same across them. And then if their resistances are the same, then the currents flowing through them are the same. But in this case, no matter what the resistances are, the current will be the same because they're in the same loop, right? All right, all right. Uh, I would take more questions, but I want to give you guys enough time to do the quiz.